This is the first expansion for Magic, and I am rating cards of the first card, expansion of Magic. Yeah, you're going to rate cards, uh, basically talking about whether or not it's good from Magic's first expansion and arguably the first expansion in card games in history, Arabian Nights. Ooh. Notably, from financial perspective, like Arabian Nights is a very um, like kind of mystical set to collectors because this, as an expansion, was severely underprinted. Okay, so the value of these cards are worth quite a bit now yes um okay. the cards i'm showing you today all of them have not been reprinted except for one i'll warn you when we get to that one so it doesn't affect your rating if you have the courage because i know it was tough last time to try to guess <laughs> the price of these cards again no i'll do that i was gonna ask you if you want to do that again that was fun <laughs> okay so uh i will warn you there's one card that has been reprinted the rest of these were never printed again and okay. uh on an absurdly small print run all right here we go what is juice and gin? Are you said mm. it's gin? Is it the gin mm. or is it gin? gin? I'm not sure. Gin, gin is the common uh, saying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two neutral, two. I think that's neutral, right? It's it's it, like oh, the frame was the the font was great back in the it's day. It's not yes, even the yes. font. It's like the, the color. color bleeds in from the background. Yeah, okay. the two. That's a two. Also, this is incredible art. This is sick. Uh, two neutral, two black. Uh, this card does one damage to you during your upkeep, and it's a five. Oh, a four mana five five that does one damage to you during your upkeep. And you told me minions are bad. Okay. Hearthstone perspective. Would I spend four mana for a five five that deals one to me at the start of my turn? In early days of Hearthstone, I probably would, to be honest. But that being said, you do have to find the lands for this. So I feel like it's worse in Magic than it would be in Hearthstone. I mean, it's a pretty beefy boy, right? Like, look at him. He's ginormous. In black. Okay, can I ask you one question? You sure can. In this set or in the, the basic set for Magic, there are cards that want you to deal damage to yourself. That benefit you from it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's a better way of phrasing that. I'm going to say no, but if you can remember one in the comment, if you want to like tell me what your Juzam Jin combo from back in the day was, go ahead, comments. You're very good at that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get the, the 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 essay. I don't know. I feel like the the I'm leaving. This is a little bit more metagaming because you told me creatures were really bad. I don't know. This one doesn't seem that bad, though. I actually think like in the early days of magic, this one could probably see play. It's not that unlikely you get to play this and it's probably impactful. Might be one of the best minions in the game at the time. Old statement, maybe controversial, but I'm going to say it was played. Yeah, this was the best creature in the game. Let's go, dude. <laughs> so huge. Dude. Oh, my God. Yeah. Turn one. You could play this with your Black Lotus. Because remember, mana is free. You, you, you just throw this down on turn one with a Black Lotus and like you're dead in four turns. Magic players weren't ready. They weren't ready, Raren. I'm telling you. This is, listen, in, if you, if this was printing the first expansion of Hearthstone, this card would be fucked. Four mana five, five is like a huge stat line, uh, even with the effect. So I'm, I'm really glad. Oh my God. That, that's all Hearthstone. That's all Hearthstone. I took a gamble there, to be honest, but I'll take it. Yeah, man. Uh, <sighs> this is a beloved creature, a beloved card that was power crept out of the game within like two, like it, it was all, it was unplayable in like two years. Yeah, but, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, because magic moved pretty fast away from like what we were talking about. Out. but this card in its moment like when someone played this against you back in the day back in the or in the mid 90s you were like oh you're a serious gamer because again very <laughs> underprinted you just didn't see these cards very often so when somebody you know strolled into the game store and threw this on the table there was like a change in the vibe you yeah. know what i mean like oh I oh you. you're you. here to battle remember we're gonna we're gonna try to set the stage on the pricing okay okay <laughs> the most expensive like magic card ever uh aside from the one ring which we've talked about before on the channel that post malone bought for two million dollars the one of one ring black lotus sold for like eight hundred thousand all right that was th these are extreme outliers okay the most i think the other most expensive card we covered in the last video was eight thousand dollars i think a time twister you don't want to go that high <laughs> most of okay. the time does that that makes sense yes i guess you i guess you. i'm gonna be a little bit more realistic i think last time i was caught up in how expensive the first generation of magic cards are mm -hmm. the second even though you told me this is limited printing it's um, a very small printing and that will have a big Im influence like this is gonna this first one's gonna set a good tone yeah i'm gonna listen this one's kind of i have to just basically guess on the first one because i have no context other than what, what you just described but i don't really think that helps i'm gonna go with four thousand five hundred dollars you can currently get a Juzam Jin at the low price of let's look at a uh, median two thousand one hundred and fifty dollars <sighs> I mean but that's still I, I, I like where your head's at I like where your head's at huh 
okay. When it was like shrunk down a Discord, that looked so strange. I bet now it I did. I see it's like two different people. Old man of the sea. One neutral, two blue. Uh, top to gain control of a creature with power no greater than old man's power. If old man becomes untapped, you lose control of this creature. So you may choose not to untap old man as normal. You also lose control of the creature if old man dies or if the creature power becomes greater than old man's. Oh, man. Old man. That is a really cool card. Okay, is there any hand buffs in Magic at the time? Hand uh, buffs? So in Hearthstone, pretty early on, they introduced the concept of hand buffs, which means while a minion's in your hand, you can play a card to buff its stats. So I'm imagining that's not the case in Magic. There mm. is... That sounds buff. like a digital mechanic. Yeah. Okay. How I, would you I, track that in I, Magic? I have to clarify that because yeah, I have yeah. I have been playing Hearthstone for ten years, and every other card game is just Hearthstone extended. Also, <laughs> there's buffs in this game at the moment. Like you could buff your attack of a creature on the board. Yep. Uh, there are a variety of cards in Magic, uh, even starting in the very first set, that could increase the uh, stats of your creature. That's important to note because that does maybe make this card slightly better. And you did say spells were really good, but you also said creatures were bad. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that this kind of effect, I think would be really powerful if creatures were good, but I, I, it's so hard to evaluate to think that creatures were bad. So why would you play this? It is very cheap though. It Not a hard cheap. thing to play. And you do get tempo from this. Like your opponent has to respond to like the additional minion. You're really in my head by saying creatures are bad. <laughs> I would say in Hearthstone, this card would be playable. Like at three mana, if I got to drop it, I think this card would be nuts. But I'm going to go with my gut here and say this is bad. Uh, just because if creatures were not playable or not great, you wouldn't want to play this. And if the last one was a four mana five five, you can't even take that one. So this one probably isn't as great. Now, one thing I'm going to say before I like reveal my take and uh, part of the reason it will inflame comments a lot is okay. These cards were played before the internet and it, they were in, in incredibly short supply. So whether or not a card was good or bad is mostly based on what happened when I ran into it in gameplay <laughs> at conventions and stores because you just couldn't go online and that see is, lists. Yes, you're actually completely right. The The scarcity of a card does translate to its overall like meta impact, right? Because if most people can't play the card, then how impactful is it really on the metagame? So you're basing this off like your individual experience in, in matches, which yep. I think is completely justified for the record so i think maybe in that circumstance it might be slightly better but i also think you're baiting me and i think this card is bad in in its day uh nobody like played this card Let's go. Let's <laughs> yeah go. yeah nobody nobody was into this card back back <laughs> in, in that time period the, the creatures you were gaining control of just didn't matter killing creatures was trivially easy for the most part um but uh, i will say i think this card was underplayed and misunderstood in the day because it's a pretty good card now i'm i'm going to hold one up oh. to the camera i own one of these and it's wait was um, was it reprinted uh, no nope i oh, own an just, original let's I'm, go. I'm, I'm, I'm showing it off right now Ooh ah and it <laughs> it's like really especially now that good creatures are cheaper like it's really fun to play in old school formats like commander and just grab the best thing on the board all the time uh so i i, I have a feeling it was underplayed in its day but when the best creature by far was that Zhuzam Jin and creatures in general weren't played, but the ones that were, most people were really into the giant creatures. Small creatures, for the most part, absolutely sucked. Uh, yeah, this this card just didn't, like, if, if somebody had it, they didn't even put it in their deck. Let's see if but, the fact that I'm holding one in my hand right now influences your take on the price. How much do you think an old man of the okay. sea goes for today? So here's the thing. This card is not is this card's inflated because of the limited uh, print, but also because it's weaker, it's less valuable. I think is how it usually works in card games. So I don't think it's more money. I don't think it's close to the other one. So I'm going to go with like 500 bucks. Oh, wow. It's uh, $399. Okay. $399. You know what? I'm taking that as a complete that, win. Dude, you're on a... You're, you're gonna get there. You're gonna get there. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm really excited to show you this one. All right. Oh my god. I love the art. Ali from Cairo. <laughs> right on the nose of that one two neutral two red while ali is in play damage that would reduce you to less than one life lowers you to one life all further damage is prevented damage that would reduce you to less than one life lowers you to one life so you can't die while this is in play and it's not a zero from, one not from damage not from damage so magic what? magic has a few like weird oh, technicalities I, I guess, like, on damage if you, de if you deck yourself like you would still yeah. lose deck okay, yourself like, and 
Um, I can't remember how many of these were popular in the day, which should give you a hint as to like the evaluation, but loss of life is not considered damage. So there are cards okay. that say when you do this, you lose one life and those Ollie doesn't save you from those. I, I sure. Okay. I understand. That. I understand that. <laughs> this is a zero one. A zero one. This is crazy. You, you can steal it with old man of the sea. <laughs> you could, you could. Dude, this one's crazy because this is a good effect in the very right circumstance. Like the, it has to be so perfect. Most of the time, this is probably trash, but maybe you delay the game one more turn so you get your mana back and then you pop off with something after like there's a card in hearthstone called ice block i don't know if you're aware of that card but it's a secret for mage that says when you would die prevent damage and you become invulnerable so that you basically live in a whole extra turn, uh, which was a really good card. But that's a secret that you can play preemptively and you don't have to worry about spending the mana later. And you, it's always going to be there unless your opponent has a way to deal with the secret. This is like if this is on board, your opponent just kills this and then you die, which I think is bad. <laughs> but I really like the, the content side of me is really trying to believe in this card. There's no way a four mana zero one seeing play, right? There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. Listen. I think it's bad, but I'm hoping I'm wrong. Please tell me it's good. So you're saying it's bad, but you want to be wrong. Yes. Yes. All right. We're going to we're going to get there. I'm going to round about. I've got to tell you a story uh, okay. of, of a young card <laughs> gamer who went to the game store to play with his new Magic the Gathering cards and ran into we'll call this person dan little danny we'll, we'll say danny went to the card store danny was probably 12 years old been playing right. magic for like two weeks and got, finally convinced his parents and gotten up the guts to step into the arena and battle other people he didn't know outside his friend circle he sits. danny sits down to play a full-grown adult like 40 year old dude big old beard chain smoking cigarettes indoors to you really get us the vibe of the time okay okay <laughs> Danny's here to play some big green creatures, like eight eights for like six mana. Really excited about it. And uh, Danny's opponent, we'll call him Steve, plays these cards that blow up all lands in play. <laughs> Just so there are no lands. Okay. Danny can't cast a damn thing. And then Steve plays this card. Danny has no lands. His creatures do nothing, and he can't kill him. And then Danny proceeds to sit there with his with Steve chain smoking, <laughs> blowing smoke in his face for 40 minutes until Steve <laughs> figures out some, like, I think uh, a 4-4 four, four flying angel that, like, in five attacks wins the game. Holy. And it's a miracle Danny didn't quit the scene it's, on the spot. Were, were you Danny? <laughs> no questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take zero questions. Um, in that circumstance, Ali from Cairo was the most infuriating busted thing in the freaking universe. Just, oh my God. Like, like imagine not knowing this card existed and seeing it drop on yes. you. Yes. Yeah. Oh my oh, yeah. God. Um, outside of some very limited experience. Yeah, the card wasn't played. It okay. wasn't good. But the fact that it existed just to make children miserable, I think is why I need to talk about this card. <laughs> well, Steve... Here's Wherever you are, fuck you, Steve. <laughs> How could you do that? Whoever Danny is, God, I'm so glad they can. I mean, um, I hope they're still playing magic. <laughs> I don't know how. Why would they? Why would I they? take a whole freaking afternoon danny had to drive like an hour to and from that store don't ask how i know <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm giving ali like 150 bucks 150 bucks uh ali is 389 dollars oh. wow he's actually so close to old man what the hell yeah right. i know um so i think one thing that you might find is that these seem to kind of center around a space where whether they're playable or not isn't important what's important is that like they're collectibles uh ring of maroof what the hell is that that's a crazy ass ring five mana instead of drawing a card from your the top of your library select one of your cards from outside the game what do you mean outside the game like you know just not... a card you own <laughs> okay this is all right just a card you can so find let me just before i even read the rest of the card you have to bring all your other cards just for this card that's so funny this card costs five neutral mana by the way i didn't even say that because i didn't even see it at the first glance um okay this card could be any card you have that you're not using in your deck or that for some reason has left the game this card is removed from the game entirely after use oh so you get to play this once you get to use this effect once once and then it's gone but and then it's any gone. card? Yeah. It could be a creature. It could be Cairo, the alley from Cairo. It could be. 
I'm going to give you, like, since you're evaluating it kind of for a competitive context, I'm going to give you some competitive context now. Okay. Because I think the original possibilities are way more fun. The way this is played in Kitchen Table Magic is, hold on, I'm going to the other room, and then, yeah. you know, five hours later, <laughs> emerge with the perfect card from deep within the bowels of your shoeboxes, right? Um, right. The way it was played and uh, handled for tournament play is that you brought a six, usually a 60 card deck and a 15 card sideboard. And in best of three matches, you would take cards out of your sideboard, put them into your deck and vice versa. So right. uh, this was allowed to get you a card from those 15 cards you brought with you from your sideboard, or it could get a card that got exiled. Uh, there were several removal spells and various spells in magic, and there still are that exile target creature, target artifact, okay. target thing. That And this could get it back out of the you, void that is exile regardless of the mana cost like the only thing that's really stopped me from saying this card is like broken broken is the mana cost because you're literally saying i can grab any card i want and put it into play like any card i want and put it into play that is into your hand into your hand still a fucking insane uh depending on the context of the game there is a card in hearthstone which is called zephyrus the great i don't know if i ever showed you it it is a card that says if your if your deck has no duplicates wish for the perfect card mm -hmm. and it gives you the theoretically speaking based on how the ai is now um they, <laughs> the they really algorithm butchered. chooses it, they really butchered the hearthstone ai recently so i don't oh, know how no. it is right now he's in wild oh, no. in standard he was really fucking good because it would give you a card from the classic Hearthstone set, but most of the time that was good enough to just have removal or have lethal or et cetera. It was a really good card. That card was two mana. Five mana is significant, especially because you don't get mana passively like you do in Hearthstone. But, oh man, this is a good, like this is such an insane effect. It's so good. Oh my God, I'm just imagining like you're playing with your friend. They're like, hold on, I gotta go get it. And then they're, they're taking two hours. <laughs> like there's no time yeah. limit. Yeah. I, I, I was at those tables in the day, man. I was at those tables. This has to be good, especially because you said to me, mana is not really like it, it doesn't really cost anything. So like having a card like this, having it in the game and then at any moment you're like, OK, I need this card. Let me go get it. I think an effect like this is too good to not be played. So I'm going to say it was good. Like, I, I feel like this is an effect that I would play in Hearthstone if I could. If I could just go into the collection and grab any card I wanted in that particular case. The, you're right that this effect is really good, but 10 mana is 10 mana is too much. 10 oh. mana is too much. It was a casual superstar, a competitive dud. Uh, like five to play it, five to use it, and then cast whatever you found. Like you're getting up to 14 mana to do something significant. You know what? I think this card's probably worth a little bit, probably a little bit more. I don't know, maybe like 500 bucks. I'll go 500. I think that's probably about fair. $195. <laughs> I'm not sure. Like, this one confuses me. I, I was surprised when I looked it up. I thought this would be like, you know, just for from the moments, I thought this would be a more expensive card, but $195 right now. Maybe creatures ring. are worth more than spells, but I don't think that's the case because like the ring is, or an artifact, sorry, because the ring is worth so much money, but it's a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. It is confusing. Speaking of, I'm really curious what you'll say about this because this card just makes me laugh. City in a bottle, two neutral mana. All the cards from this set must be discarded from play, except for City in a bottle. While City in a bottle is in play, no further cards from this set can be played. And the set being Arabian Nights, but what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, that is crazy. You did tell me that this was very really limited. So uh -huh. I feel like this card wasn't very popular because of that reason alone. But my God, if it was a standard release, this card would be fucking crazy. You're you could just destroy people with this card. Wow. All cards from play. And you I'm, can't play anymore. You can't so if even play a city in a bottle to get rid of a city in a bottle. If your opponent is playing all the cards from Arabian Nights, they just lose. Like it's just you just it's over. Like, what are they going to do? That's so. Oh, my God. I don't. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> it's so, this is impossible to evaluate. Can you believe I, this card got printed? I can't. I actually can't believe I, it. I, I, like you literally put. Can you imagine in Hearthstone or in current magic? If you put a card in your set that said all cards from this new set that you just crafted, <laughs> bought and were hyped about are like banned. Just dead, gone for two I mean, mana. Not even like a six mana card. Yeah, two it's mana. pretty cheap, dude. You I, I play it on turn two, and oh, it's like the set never happened. You're really, you're really making me believe this card was played with what you just said. Because that's just can you imagine if you I, crafted I this on I day one? Can't. It's the only card you craft from the set, and you just go hit ladder, and you hit all the people with the new cards in their deck, and you're just like get fucked. At a standard rotation <laughs> too, like it would be GG. Like you'd. 
and roll people with this. But God, they would, I don't know. There's two mana to play this is so nuts. Like, I feel like if the set was more popular, this card would have been better. And I think it would have been broken and I think it wouldn't have to have been banned. But because it's so limited and people probably weren't playing around the fact that people were playing for Arabian Nights, I don't think it was good. At that the time. is, yep, that, that's good, good analysis. You're right. I, okay. I agree with that completely. There, it's important to know that there wasn't a pro tour at the time and there weren't even world championships like when this was new like tournaments the whole scene was just like go to your game store who's there right right and the best case for this was if you could get your hands on one of these but couldn't afford the other cards in the set or find enough arabian knights cards this was something you could play if you were sick of getting soloed by ali from cairo right like you, you i never saw this card nobody ever played it against me and i didn't own one I, for some reason, I think this one's worth more uh, just because of like the nature of the effect. I'm going to go with uh, let's go 500 again. I think 500 is pretty safe. 453. OK, you're okay. closer to right than wrong. I'll take that. I'll take that. This might be this might be one of the more iconic cards that like it's just one of those things where magic players like to sit around talking about a game they had or a possibility if or just, oh, my God, if somebody played this at this time, what would happen? OK. So, enjoy oh my god look at this text this is a Yu-Gi-Oh card oh my god Shahrazad mm -hmm. uh I'm gonna do that is that that's white right two white mana oh, it looks so strange it okay, is two this, white mana it's a sorcery spell oh my god players must leave game in progress as it is and use the cards left in their libraries as decks with which to play a sun game of magic <laughs> When sub game is over, players shuffle these cards, return them to their libraries and resume the game in progress with any loser of the sub game having his or her remaining life points rounding down. Effects that prevent damage may not be used to counter this loss of life. The sub game has no ante. Using less than 40 cards may be necessary. Oh my God. <laughs> what do you mean? This is crazy. Players must leave the game as a, okay. So functionally in real life, you just pick your board up or you pick your deck up and you move over like five inches or maybe even more. And then you yeah. start a second game with that deck. Yeah. And you start with no mana. Yeah. Dude, this okay. I know this actually kind of looks super like meme, but this is kind of insanely good, isn't it? Like if you're maybe I'm coping here, but if you're not playing like a super aggressive deck and your opponent is using all of their mana on their like aggro package and you drop this like they're they just lost half their life potentially like potentially right. But that sounds like Kobe. you got to like, win the second game. How do I where do you even start? Like what? what <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> They must have been whatever drugs they were doing. Like <laughs> it had to be incredible. Like oh, this. Oh yeah. This what, is. You know what magic needs? More magic. <laughs> this is crazy, dude. I'm just thinking of this in Hearthstone. You play this card. You play, you start a second game, but like there's passive mana, and then oh my god, this. I I want to say it was good. Like, but I, I'm, I just can't imagine the real life circumstances of you dropping this at your like your card store, and people are like, "Are you fucking serious?" <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I would probably concede. <laughs> I have done a lot of these videos, right? I've done a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh videos. And trust me when I say this, Yu-Gi-Oh has some absolute crazy cards in it. This might be the craziest card I've ever seen in front of me. This is wild. Was it good? I'm going to go with no, but I am hoping it was good as well, because this is crazy. You know, no, you know what? I'm fucking coping. Uh, this card's amazing. This card's the best. This card's the best card you've shown me. <laughs> so this is this is very much a trick. Uh, the, the, the just showing this to you was was the reward of its own. I don't know how to evaluate this because it was basically <laughs> instant banned in everything. <laughs> like at card like, source. Yeah, card like like from like a grassroots movement. Like this card. It's just oh, I don't play them at all. At my local card store was banned. At yeah. at like everything I ever went to, it, it's banned. It's currently banned in every format it could possibly be legal in. It's just insta banned everywhere. Nobody is willing to fuck with it. You when you're gonna tell somebody a story about the craziest magic thing that happened on your kitchen table on game night, you're gonna be like, and then they cast <laughs> Charizard. I know it's not legal, but imagine you're playing a four player game of Commander. You're having a uh -huh. great time and someone yeah. says, hey, idiot, we're starting a new game now. <laughs> you're fucking crying. That YouTube video would be five hours. I'm not kidding. I, I think the fundamentally correct play is to scoop. Just scoop that game. 
On turn, what, what, on what turn is, zero. What does Scoot uh, I mean? Just concede, concede. Oh, just here's concede another question. <laughs> I, hold on. This is like Inception real fast. I don't know if you've seen yeah. that movie. Great yes. fucking movie. But oh, yeah. imagine you play Charizard and your opponent also has one in their deck. And then they also play it against you on the sub game. Does that mm -hmm. mean we go to an additional level? So there's a sub game to the sub oh, game. And you can have four copies in your deck in theory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep it going. Cook, the best baby. card I've ever seen. This is cook. There I are love cards this. that copy sorceries. There's a card called Fork. You just make a copy of this, cast it twice. Is this legal in Arena? No, it's oh, not okay. printed on Arena. It's not legal anywhere. When I, I say would... banned, it's it's like it never existed. To be honest, I'm just asking that because I would love to see how they handled the UI for this. Like, I just want to see how it interacts in the game because I'm thinking in like a Hearthstone perspective, like how would they would handle like the additional board. But yeah, it's probably for the best they didn't code this and it'd be a fucking nightmare. I think this could be legal in best of one arena. I think it would be fun. Like best of one arena average length of game is like four or five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. I think it would be cool. If they print but, it, let me know. I want I, I would I would I would love this. This is well, crazy. Day one video, Charizard and Standard. Let's go. Okay, so uh, based on what you just told me, by the way, I'm assuming this card's actually worth quite a bit. Because this is so bad shit. <laughs> Like people would be like, I need to collect this card because it's amazing. They have, please tell me, they have never printed another card like this ever again. They have never printed okay. another card like this ever again. This is two, this is two point five grand. It's five hundred and seventy three dollars. Oh, <laughs> I was really hoping for it. I was really hoping for it. <laughs> I mean, it does seem like a piece that if somebody wanted this, if if they just want to see the look on their friend's face when they snuck it into their commander deck on on Friday night, like they'd pay whatever price was necessary because magic whales are ridiculous. But yeah, I, just the fundamentally banned everywhere. It's strictly only for people trying to collect the set at this point. Now, the next uh, cards I have for you, they are lands. I, I am prefacing this because it's important. Until this set, and remember, this is the first expansion set in Magic history. The, I didn't show you really any lands from our first like old school review. And that's because all the lands in the first set in uh, Alpha Beta Unlimited only produce mana. There were dual lands that produced two colors, and there right. were basic lands that produced one. And that's all they did. And okay. when you think of when you think of lands, that's what you think of, right? Is that yes, oh mana. lands make mana. But very early in the days of magic, and this is kind of incredible, honestly, from a game design standpoint, they identified that they could do more. And in the very first expansion, they created lands with abilities. And for that reason, I think it's really fun to try to evaluate oh, these. Oh man, okay. <laughs> Island of Walk Walk. <laughs> <laughs> Tap to reduce target flying creatures power to zero. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, you know, Hearthstone. I don't know if I've shown you this, the location cards in Hearthstone. It's almost like this design. Dude, this is so specific. Oh my God, this can't be good. But um, okay, were flying creatures very popular in the basic set? Or the I don't base think set? I've even shown you one. <laughs> but um, um, our, uh, yeah, there was um, there's a vampire that flies that was really popular. There's an angel that flies that was really popular. Shivan Dragon, probably most popular creature, was a flyer. Wouldn't you just rather kill the creature than playing that? If the creatures were bad, the point of playing this? What if this you have this down and you kill the creature, and then you still have this for the next creature? Yeah, so I guess the, the real interesting thing about this is that they refresh at the start of your upkeep. So you can keep doing this. Like if they, if your opponent spends their mana on a flying creature, you don't even have to kill it. You could just keep tapping it and being like, fuck you, you're attacking with this stupid creature. I only think it's bad though, because it's so specific that I think just doing something better with your mana, you'd rather probably draw a different card most of the time. Because if they have no flying creatures, it literally does nothing. And I'm guessing in this current state of magic, it wasn't that popular. So I think this card is bad. It was hard to get one of these and uh, I think that the biggest thing in the evaluation that you have to look at is your it doesn't make mana. So you're playing this and you only get to play one land a turn. So right. If you play That's this, also you're off curve forever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, I, I never played against this card. I didn't know anybody who had it. It seems good, actually, in theory, in old school magic. But there were also a lot of cards back then that destroyed lands. Destroying lands is kind of taboo in current magic, but back then was not abnormal. Uh, it's uh, there's just some funny things about this card though that make me want to show it. I, I would agree that this wasn't this was probably better than you'd think, but just nobody played it because nobody had it, and because uh, people were scared of getting their lands blown up anyway, which is weird. Uh, it's really funny that's called Island of Walk Walk, and it's not an island. Oh, I guess <laughs> it, yeah, you're right. It's just a guy. 
<laughs> it's not it's not it's not not the art but the type island like a land type is island like that is the blue basic land like it could have been land type island and it's not <laughs> one of the notes and rulings for the card is literally not an island uh 180 dollars 400 400 for this baby i don't know people get excited <laughs> City of Brass, have to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. You suffer one damage whenever City of Brass becomes tapped. One mana of any color to your mana pool, is that for this turn only or is that forever? Yes, uh, mana pool is clear at the end of phases. So okay. yeah, you, it, it's, it functions basically like a land or like a mana crystal. You get it, you untap next turn and you do it again. I mean, bro, like really good. I'd play this card. Yeah, this isn't this is insane, right? This has to be good. Why? Uh, well, okay, so here's the thing. In Hearthstone, I think this card's playable. The thing about Hearthstone is that there's not colored mana. Mm -hmm. This card has the benefit of being any color at the cost of one damage to your life total. And in a lot of cases, the damage is irrelevant for getting a specific mana color you need. So I think this card was played and it's actually good. Nailed it. This card's awesome. Uh, oh. it, in Magic, it was not easy to get the colors of mana you need to do the thing. And this was the first five color land released. Exactly. So okay, it, yeah. yeah, it made playing like three, four, five colors reasonable as opposed to an insane meme pipe dream. And uh, <laughs> before I have you tell me how much it's worth, I'm going to let you know, this is the only card I'm showing you today that's been reprinted. This card uh, oh. has been reprinted in... Uh, several times now, actually, over the years, so that people have been able to keep playing it into the future. 1,500. Ooh, I bet you would be right if it weren't reprinted. I bet you uh, would be right. Is I it lower? Because I think it's worth that. It's it's $500 right now. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. damn it, I got baited. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A little bit, a little bit. But uh, I... I I like on power level. I think you're right. Uh, Library of Alexandria. That looks like a nice place. Um, okay. Tap to add one colorless mana to your mana pool or draw a card from your library. Colorless mana means any mana color. Uh, it can be paid. It can pay generic costs. Oh, I it, get it you. Can't okay. Play yeah. It can't pay colored costs. Uh, draw a card from your library or draw a card from your library. You may use the card drawing ability only if you have exactly seven cards in your hand. Interesting. Little refresher. You start with seven cards in your hand. Your max hand size by default is seven. And then if you end with more than seven cards, you have to discard a card at the at your next yes. turn. Return. Yes. See, the thing is, I almost feel like just tapping to add one color to mana to your mana pools is fine. And this is just like an additional benefit. If anything, it might be really good depending on what you have in your hand. Yeah, I think this card's just good, right? Like, I mean, it, you don't even need to use the second effect if you don't want to, but having the additional benefit of like the versatility of a land like this probably made it a lot better. I think the last one was better because I'd rather be able to do any color, but drawing cards is good. And especially if, if it's anything like Hearthstone, there wasn't really efficient draw in the early days of Classic. So like this is an additional draw, but potentially depending on what your hand size was this card is completely busted okay like, so it's it, fucking it, phenomenal oh, oh it is but it is insane this and card is insane just you play this on turn one also uh rules of magic back then nowadays you don't draw a card when you go first back then you drew a card regardless like whoever went first oh. also drew a card Okay. Um, and so like yeah you just play this on turn one and you start drawing two cards a turn every turn just in, yeah, it's pretty good. yeah, for nothing, for nothing, like you don't pay any cost. It, and yeah, tapping for a colorless is completely fine. But yeah, like who had the whoever had the library, it's like they already won. It's like on turn one, they're they're oh, going to draw like four or five you, more yeah. cards than you during the game okay. and you're not going to keep up. And this existed in a world with Mox's Lotus and a bunch of things like that. You could make an argument that this was the best card in the game. I, I'm going oh. to hold... I said it's a card I like better than Charizard. You probably don't, but I have fond memories. I'm holding up an original Library of Alexandria to the camera right now. I still own one of these. It's banned in just about everything. It's legal in a format called Vintage that only the whaliest whales on Earth play. <laughs> and um, I bullied my entire school with this card because I got one and they didn't. And I just turn one. Here we go. And you didn't really understand card games back then because it was new, right? So right. the idea of somebody drawing more cards wasn't is obviously busted back then. It was just a thing that happened. It wasn't a creature. It didn't attack or block. Those were the cool things that people focused on. And it was as we did, kind of learned about card advantage theory that, yeah, 
um drawing more cards is insane and doing it for free <laughs> starting from turn one like the game yeah, was I, over dude like i guess I, I i knew it they didn't i'd play this on turn one and have this like twinkle in my eye they'd be like what i'd be like gg <laughs> <laughs> See, you're you're the you bring out that interesting aspect of like card games were brand new at that time. Yeah. Um when I first started my card game journey, right? I was shit and I didn't realize how important consistency is in your deck. That's like the biggest thing for card games is consistency and that comes from drawing cards. So, if you had this card and none of your schoolmates had this card, I feel bad for them. That'd be it, fucked up. It wasn't fair. It, would be fucked it up. was it was not fair. They they thought I was good. It's like, no, I just know that Library of Alexandria is good. The rest yes. of my deck was shit. Did they realize <laughs> that matter. that was the card that was like winning them the game or winning you not, the game? Not usually, no. In oh. fact, they like people would get mad. I'm losing to that crap. You know, I play some like <laughs> three mana <laughs> creature and some four mana creature, and they're just like, why am I losing? Well, uh, because you didn't draw any lands to cast your spells or like. You know, you didn't draw them on curve because your deck had no consistency because you didn't have card draw. I'm drawing like extra cards a turn. I'm hitting all my land drops. I'm casting a five mana card while you're still stuck on three. Like, but people yeah, don't see yeah. it. They don't see that right away. They see, yeah, the, see big, the creature that beats them. God, you make it seem like it's so good. Uh, let's go with like a grand. I'm like, a I've grand? been highballing it. Yeah, I think I'm around a thousand. One thousand five hundred and ninety dollars. Oh, my God. oh, I was, I, you know, my first inclination was to do fifteen hundred again, but. Mm. The other yeah. two lands are lower, but yeah. Fifteen hundred, I would have said you nailed it. It's uh yeah, that's um it's got a pedigree, man. People who knew back in the day, they knew. I, I wish magic were that easy to just bully people with basic magic principles. Oh, it was fun. Yeah, now it's <laughs> now it's a completely different game. One more card. I'm I'm really curious to see what you say about this one. It you, we have to take all the things from today's video and we have to put it into one card evaluation and see what you come up with. Zara Baghdad have to take two cards from your library after which you must immediately discard three from your hand to your graveyard if you don't have if you don't have three or more cards in hand discard your whole hand no spells may be cast between drawing and discarding cards I can just give you the gatherer text like the updated text if this okay. were out today it would say tap draw two cards then discard three and magic because the graveyard is much more relevant I feel like this is way better and it's hard for me to really gauge that because obviously I don't we don't really play with like an official graveyard in Hearthstone but I mean if you are this is a lance you can do this every turn there has to be cards that I really want you to put cards in your graveyard which makes me think this is better oh my god cards in the graveyard in magic are a full-blown resource to decks that yeah. want it to be you, you can use it to cheat mana you can use it to get creatures for free it's a full-blown resource okay. in magic now that you said that out loud my first immediate thought is yeah this card's amazing then right but what if you're trying to bait me with that you know what i mean that's where the true metagame comes out i said thing, that because i think it would be unfair not to well fair enough fair enough if that's the case and you were being very genuine I think this card's very strong without even knowing the rest of the puzzle. Like if you, the graveyard is that impactful, this is an insane card because yeah, you are discarding your hand. You get to pick the three cards, I'm guessing, to go in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is insane. If your deck is built around your graveyard, this card's nuts. Final answer. As a fair card, as just a, as like, ooh, this card is cool. I'm going to put it in my deck. This is so bad. It was absolutely terrible. <sighs> and that's the way it came out at the time. But okay, as cards got printed, and as magic expanded as a game, the limits that you could, that this card could take your deck to started to be revealed. And there are decks in older formats called Manaless Dredge. The, the deck doesn't even produce mana. It mulligans until it has this card, no matter how many times it mulligans, even down to like one. <laughs> and then it literally just goes like it just goes off without ever making mana. It creates creatures, it plays spells, and it does busted things and can starts it right on turn one, specifically because of this card. And there's no card in Magic that has duplicated what this card has done. None. It's nice. It's, it's kind of wild. Uh, just the, the potency of this ridiculous card. Yeah. What do you think? How much do you think someone would pay to just ignore the rules of Magic the Gathering? Honestly, how much, how much would they pay to turn magic into Yu-Gi-Oh? If there's one thing I know about card gamers is that they will do whatever it takes to win games. And I think this is probably going to be a pretty expensive card. So I'm going to take a guess especially because it's a land. You said I'm going to go with like three grand, three grand. To get a that, first would make edition. It, that would make it the most expensive card that we talked about today. I I'm, I'm all for it.
I, I'm going to give you credit. Uh, two thousand two hundred and thirty-five dollars. Okay. But your head was in a hundred percent the right place. Listen, I, it's just I know from Hearthstone, like especially when there's one deck that's just objectively the best, that's the only thing you're going against. So if you can have fun while making your opponent's life miserable, that's what card games are about. And people would pay a high bar or high price for this. 100%. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they go for it. <laughs> this is still legal in Commander. Funnily, but and you like never see it because it's insane. The well, price no, is insane. You, I feel all, well, also that, but I also feel like in Commander, I, I've never played it personally, but I, in Commander, I feel like if someone plays this card turn one, you're like, you all of you would look over to them and be like, Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I bet we would. <laughs> I bet they'd get attacked just on principle. So, what do you think of Arabian Nights? Absolutely crazy expansion uh i'm really glad that they learned <laughs> from this i would hope uh share <laughs> is the greatest card i've ever seen in my life all right one thing for the end of this video that i thought might be good for your channel your comments were really mad at me for not telling you the chaos confetti story so i'm going to tell you the chaos confetti story if you remember the chaos orb the idea is to flip it and any cards that it touches are destroyed right right general gist general gist so it is unclear i i can't stress this enough people say they know the guy or people say they read the report online or somebody somewhere might have a black and white photo of it i don't know a polaroid perhaps but at some point the urban legend goes that there was a tournament probably with an epic first prize of millions of dollars because uh, of course magic tournaments had those back in the day and <laughs> in the finals on an un just insurmountable board state johnny magic drew the perfect card for the moment chaos orb. the only problem was that chaos orb at its best might be able to touch four or five cards and his opponent had something like 30 lethal permanents in play don't ask what they are it doesn't matter so johnny made the decision that only the bravest best and most esports before esports gamer possibly could see johnny knew if you have an infection in your arm and you're going to become a zombie the only option is to cut off your arm johnny for the next 15 minutes carefully slowly ripped his chaos orb into a thousand tiny pieces. And then, as the card requires, from a height of at least one foot, spread the confetti and smothered his opponent's entire board, which by rule of the judge there at the time, the judge pronounced it a legal play. And the pieces of the chaos orb obliterated his opponent's entire battlefield, leaving him stunned, demoralized, and Johnny went on to win the billions, probably, of dollars of Magic the Gathering prize money and the hearts, minds, and imaginations of Magic players around the world. And that is my telling of the Chaos Confetti story. <laughs> That's actually amazing, to be honest. I'm trying to... I feel like... I want to call it a skill diff because the guy's brain was so elite that you would think of something like that. Because I, I don't think you would go into a game thinking to rip up the card, right? You would be in that moment like, okay, how do I win this game? And then it would hit you randomly. And then it would be the greatest victory of all time. And it's probably still the greatest victory of all time. There's no video on that, right? Urban legend, my friend. Did it even oh. really happen? In the year, several years later... Uh, Magic released its first, quote, unset called Unglued. And what an unset is, to give a very brief, simple description, cards that are not meant to be played with the rest of Magic cards. They are meant to be funny. They are pa Magic parodying itself. The story was so popular for a story that may or may not have happened that this card was in the set. Oh my god, they actually released Chaos Confetti. Four and tap. Air chaos confetti into pieces. Throw the pieces onto the playing area from a distance of at least five feet. Destroy each card and play that the piece touches. Remove the pieces from the game afterward. And you thought this was just an urban legend? I don't that know. Is, is it? That's incredible. That's the art is so good for that too. Oh my god.